it took my husband and I 13 years before we were able to have a child. I had a normal pregnancy, a healthy baby, and it was just, it was just all I ever wanted. All I ever wanted. The first thing I noticed is that he was so smart, and at two and a half, I could point at random letters on an alphabet board, and he knew every letter. And he memorized his TV programs, and he memorized songs, and he memorized all his books. Austin had always had problems, but at five, a team of doctors diagnosed him with autism. The day my husband and I were getting the official diagnosis, when we got home, I went to the school to pick up my child, and they told me they had lost him. They found him out by the road and was spelling out S-T-O-P, stop. That spells stop, Mommy. And he would say that, and no one was there but him. And that really upset me. And I was working a factory job, 12-hour shifts. And when they lost him, I told my husband he either needed to quit his job or I was, because I was going to be at that school every day. We call them meltdowns. He would get very upset and frustrated. I would describe it as he would think we could read his mind and why didn't we know what he wanted. So before second grade started, some of the teachers and I and the aides were out in the hall talking and they are the ones that suggested maybe I could take him to a doctor and maybe there was a medicine that could help him. Every three months, if not sooner, we would go back for a checkup. And every time he upped the dose, he would gain up to 20 pounds, which is extreme. He was a slender child. He was slender and he played and he stayed active, but he started to look like a heavy set little boy. My first thought when his breast started growing, I thought, how unfortunate that this is happening to him because so many times young men can be overweight and they don't have breast. One day when he was swimming, he had two little neighborhood friends that would come and play and they were both very thin. They brought some friends one time. And when those boys came, I, uh, I knew they were making fun of him. When I realized they were laughing and saying something about him, um, you know, I, I didn't want him to be around anybody like that. Because of the autism, there's not a lot of friend opportunity, so that was really hard. It wasn't long after that. He started swimming with his shirt on. And we did think that it helped him, but there's no one time that I saw a major, oh wow, he's not doing this anymore, he's not getting upset anymore, he's not throwing things or hitting or hurting himself. It never stopped, it just didn't happen as often. One night, I was sitting on the couch watching TV, and an ad came on saying that Respiradol has been linked to gynecomastia, young men growing breasts. It just made me want to cry. It just made me sick at my stomach. And I thought, I'm going to call. The young lady I spoke with said that could I take a picture of him and text it to her. I told Austin that I was trying to get a picture of him uh, because he was doing so good losing weight, and he was proud of that. And I said, show me your muscles, and he smiled and said, cheese, and I texted it to the girl, and she called me back, and she said by looking at the picture, she, she said we had a case. I was not angry with J&J. &J. I went into it very naively, knowing that the medicine caused the gynecomastia, but not quite grasping their knowledge. That was the part that upset me the most. When it finally hit me, Johnson & Johnson knew, they knew what they were doing to my child. They don't care about Austin Pledger. That's ugly to say, but it's, it was just a game to them, it felt like. He doesn't know there was a case. He doesn't know he's a victim 
of a crime. He doesn't know we give him medicine to help with his behavior, and we did not tell him the medicine caused his breast. And when he gets out of the shower and he covers up, or when he gets in front of the mirror and crosses his arms over his breast and holds them down and admires himself to see how he looks without them, I tell him that he's handsome and that that's his chest, and I never tell him he's got breast, even though he can see. That's hard, but I can't act like it's hard, that he is never going to be able to um, have a normal body type. I can't put him through the surgery that it would take to repair that. Um, because he's not a typical child that would understand the, what that requires. He deserves what every child deserves. Before he was born, I wrote in his baby book, I want him to be happy and content and healthy. That's all I've, that's all I've ever wanted for him.